So 5 by 4 is asymptotes and intercepts, and that's on pages 248 to 253. Our curriculum outcome is 30.5 to extend understanding of curve sketching by applying differentiation and limits. And our lesson objective is number one, to be reminded on how to find both x and y intercepts. Number two, to be reminded on how to find the equations for both vertical and horizontal asymptotes. And number three, to learn how to find asymptotes that are neither horizontal nor vertical. First topic is finding intercepts. From this and previous courses, we know that there are x and y intercepts for most functions. And to find the y intercept, we just let x equal zero and solve, that's pretty easy. But to find the x intercepts, we let y equal zero and solve. So remember, you need to know how to factor in order to do this. And including synthetic division, that helps us find factors of a polynomial that has a degree greater than two. So let's talk about finding asymptotes. We know from previous lessons this year that vertical asymptotes can be found by examining factors in the denominator of rational functions. And there are two ways to find the location of horizontal asymptotes. The first way, you could use limits and let x equal or let x approach infinity. And x could also approach negative infinity as well. Examining the degrees of both the numerator and the denominator also tell us where we can find the location of horizontal asymptotes. So if the degrees are equal, the asymptote is at y equals c, where c is the ratio of the leading coefficients of the numerator and the denominator, leading coefficients being that number in front of your highest uh, degree. And if the degree on the denominator is bigger than the degree on the numerator, then the asymptote is at y equals zero. So other asymptotes, if the degree in the numerator happens to be larger than the degree in the denominator, you could have what we call an oblique asymptote, which is a slanted line. That's so not vertical, not horizontal, but on an angle. Or you can have a parabolic asymptote. And to find the equation of these special asymptotes, you need to perform long division. And your quotient, which is your answer, will be the equation of the asymptote. And in the end, you're gonna get a remainder, but we don't care about that. It's the quotient that is the asymptote. Also remember from our limits unit that functions that contain radicals or absolute value signs may have two horizontal asymptotes. And you'll need to consider the limit of the function as x approaches both infinity and negative infinity. So you might wanna just brush up on your limits. So we're gonna find the intercepts and any asymptotes of the following function. So here's our first one, f of x equals two x plus five divided by x squared minus x minus 20. So your first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna factor the bottom. So two things that multiply to negative 20, add to negative one, that's x minus five and x plus four. So finding intercepts, finding asymptotes, doesn't matter which one you do first. I'm gonna look at the asymptotes first. I know that x can't equal five, so that's a vertical asymptote at x equals five. And I know that x can't equal negative four. Those are my non-permissible values from the bottom. So that means that x is gonna equal negative four. Those are both asymptotes. Horizontally, I take a look at the degrees. Since the degree in the denominator is bigger than the degree in the numerator, um, I know that my horizontal asymptote is at y equals zero. Finding intercepts is pretty easy. Uh, to find the y-intercept, we let x equal zero. So we just get five over negative 20. So that means our y-intercept when x equals zero is a uh, negative one quarter. That's a simplified version of five over negative 20. And if I let this thing equal zero, uh, the y value equals zero, I get zero equaling two x plus five over x squared minus x minus 20. And I know that if I want to solve for two x plus five, I'll multiply both sides by x squared minus x minus 20. Well, that's multiplied by zero. So really, when you're looking at the x-intercept of a function, when you, and you have stuff in the denominator, we can ignore anything in the denominator and just look at the numerator. And so that means our x-intercept, so when y equals zero, if we solve for x here, we get negative five over two. So our second example is f of x equals four x squared minus one over two x squared minus four x. So again, the first thing we're gonna do is factor the top and the bottom. So I get two x minus one and two x plus one on the top. And on the bottom, I can take out a greatest common factor of two x and I get x minus two on the bottom. So again, I look for vertical asymptotes so x equals zero is one of my vertical asymptotes. That's for that factor there. And for that factor, x equals two. And when I look for horizontal asymptotes, I compare the degrees again. So I have a degree of two here and a degree of two here. So since those both are the same degree, um, the ratio of four over two is the equation of my horizontal asymptote. So that is just four over two is two. And then I look for my intercepts. Well, for my one intercept, I let x equal zero for my y-intercept. I get one divided by zero. 
Well, that doesn't happen. And so there are no uh, y-intercepts. And that should make sense because we said that there's a vertical asymptote at zero. So if the vertical asymptote is at zero, then there's no way that there could be a y-intercept there. And our x-intercept is going to be at these two values right here. So x-intercepts are going to be at um, zero comma, sorry, something comma zero and something comma zero. And so that'll be a positive half when we solve for that factor and it'll be a negative half when we solve for that factor. So our final one is f of x equals x squared plus six x divided by x plus three. So again, we're gonna find our intercepts first. Well, or sorry, our asymptotes first. We know that there's a vertical asymptote at x equals negative three. But if we check the degrees, this is an x squared and this is an x. So this degree is bigger. So I can actually divide x squared plus six x. I can divide it by x plus three. And we're gonna do that with long division. So if you remember long division, I ask myself, what do I multiply x by in order to get x squared? And that would just be x. And then I take this x, I multiply it by both those terms. So I get x squared and I get three x. Then I subtract the red uh, numbers from the blue numbers. And when I do that, if I go x squared minus x squared, I get zero. If I get six x minus three x, I get three x. Now I ask myself, what do I multiply x by to get three x? Well, that would be a three. So I get three times x, which is three x. I get three times three, which is nine. Once again, I subtract three x minus three x is zero. And this was a zero here. So zero minus nine is a negative nine. Now then the remainder is uh, useless to us. We're looking for the equation for the asymptote. So your oblique asymptote is gonna have an equation of y equals x plus three. So this answer right here, the quotient is the equation of your oblique asymptote. Um, we still need to find intercepts. So if I factor the top, I get x and x plus six. So I have two x intercepts, one's at zero, zero, and the other one would be at negative six and zero. And then if I want to try and find my y intercepts, if I plug zero in for here, here, and here, anywhere that there's an x, I get zero divided by three, which is zero. Well, we already have that point, zero comma zero is our x and y intercept. In summary, to find the y intercept, we let x equal zero and solve. To find x intercepts, we let y equal zero and solve. We need to know how to factor in order to do these things. Um, and so as long as you know how to factor, you're good to go. Vertical asymptotes are found from examining factors in the denominator functions. If the degrees are equal, then the asymptote horizontally is at y equals c, where c is the ratio of the leading coefficients of the numerator and the denominator. If the degree of the denominator is bigger than the degree of the numerator, then that horizontal asymptote is at y equals zero. If the degree in the numerator is larger than the degree in the denominator, we know that we're gonna have an oblique asymptote or even a parabolic asymptote. When you get an oblique asymptote is when the degrees differ by one. If the degrees differ by two, you'll get a parabolic asymptote. Also remember from our limits unit that functions um, that contain radicals or absolute value signs may have actually two horizontal asymptotes, so that's important to know. And in order to figure those out, you need to consider the limit as the function approaches uh, infinity or negative infinity. So your assignment today is on pages 252 to 253. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.